So for those of you who miss me, I've been on a little trip and it started a week last Sunday. So that was Sunday morning and that was the ferry crossing from Anglesey over to Dublin Port and a quick drive and journey over two and a half hours other side of the country into Sligo. Sligo was where this whole thing started and before I start let me say a massive thank you to Lynchpin Tours, Lowell Courtney who helped me organise all this so massive thanks to Lowell. Um, and Lynchpin Tours and if you are looking for similar trips then that is the place to go because he organised every little bit of this and it was organised to perfection. For what was, it was just a brilliant week for me personally. I don't know how good of a video this is to share with you but I want to give you my guided tour around for the five or six days and what I experienced and why I've come back with a little bit of uh, man flu but ultimately blown away and fell in love again with Ireland. Been there many times uh, but not for a few years and uh, I absolutely adore this place but let's get back to where it all started in Sligo. Stayed at the uh, Glass House Hotel, great locations right in the middle of Sligo on the river, nice little views there, nice little place. Didn't stay there long enough to decide uh, exactly how much is going on there but there's uh, plenty of little pubs, bars and restaurants as with all uh, little towns and villages in Ireland and uh, we had a little bit of a night out and uh, come across these uh, bunch of musicians of the highest quality that apparently are just met together. A few of them know one another, but they get together for what's called a session. And uh, one starts on the fiddle, the other one joins in, and away they go for absolute hours. And it was absolutely brilliant. <laughs> And just a, it's just great entertainment. It's so the the whole bar was so enthusiastic about it all, and like I said, the quality of what they were doing was absolutely brilliant. Anyway, that was day one. Um, that was the evening of day one. The following day was the real start to the tour. I went over to County Sligo Golf Club. It's in a place called Ross's Point, and seriously, the views from this place are absolutely breathtaking. Uh, what I'm going to run now is a quick video of. Give you an idea of what County Sligo Golf Club is all about. Okay, so after the golf, it was back on the move, and I moved up to Ballyliffin, um, 
went to stay in a place called Ballyliffin Townhouse, which I was in Ballyliffin four years ago, and apparently this place had just been sort of taken over and renovated. Brilliant place to stop off, really nice uh, rooms were superb, great food in there, breakfast was absolutely brilliant as well, and a real good stop off there, uh, ready and prepared for the following morning, which was to visit Ballyliffin Golf Club, which I said I've been to previously, Two courses, the Old Course and the Glashidi Links. And the Glashidi Links will host the Irish Open in about three weeks from now. And I got a real opportunity to play the course and to experience, well, A, just from the first tee where the, the sort of backdrop is in with all the sponsors' names and the, the DDF Irish Open, the Dubai Duty Free Irish Open as it is, just standing on those tee boxes pretending I was part of that Irish Open for just a few minutes and losing yourself, is a, it's a great experience. And then coming down the 18th uh, with the grandstands in place to the right of the green, I couldn't help but take my cap off and wave to the imaginary crowd. Uh, it was a great, great moment. So again, here's a little insight to what Ballyliff and Golf Club is all about. So there you go, absolutely stunning, I, I, just stunning. It was immaculate condition, as you'd expect it to be for the world's top players arriving in a few weeks time, but it was. And to be fair, when I played there four years ago, uh, it was in exactly the same, absolutely pristine condition. What a golfing experience, absolutely loved it. But again, it was back into the car, back on the travels, and we do stop uh, very shortly for a few nights, but it was off into Northern Ireland and into Port Rush. Now, quick tip, if you travel from Bali Liffin to Port Rush, it's probably about an hour and a half drive. Um, but there's a little shortcut and you can go to a place called Greencastle and get on the Lock Foil Ferry, which costs you about, I think it was 14 euros, and that's about a 10 minute crossing across the lock rather than driving all the way down to the bottom of it and round. And it probably saves you about, I don't know, maybe an hour's journey, 45, 50 minute journey uh, time. So that was great. Uh, but also, I love the little ferry crossing itself. Uh, nice little time to just stop off, take in the views, and sit back for 10 minutes and a break from driving. Into Port Rush, where we stayed for the next three nights at a place called Inn on the Coast, which yet again, these places are all perfect locations for experiencing the golf. Um, and all these golf courses are basically in the near in, in the near vicinity. So we played Castle Rock and Port Rush, which again from in on the coast are sort of all about ten or fifteen minutes away either side. So perfect locations. In on the coast, very good as well. Um, stayed there, quiet night in after a bit of travelling. Following morning, it was up and out to Castle Rock Golf Club for an early start. It was a bit dull on the day, which was a bit disappointed. Uh, it was nice to see the sun shining. Um, but we perhaps didn't catch the course in the best light in terms of the film I'm about to show you. But having said that, you will certainly get the idea of, again, what a fantastic place. What, this, this is just a golf region, it's just heaven. And uh, Every golf course I have played there, I can't really find any that I've been critical of. I love Lynx Golf, as you well know. I love golf courses with views. 
these all these golf courses offer both of them but then you get classic quality Lynx tracks as well to boot so here's a look around uh, Castle Rock and what we experienced at their golf course. So I had a really enjoyable day at Castle Rock and experienced some of the changes. They made quite a few changes on that course over the last, it reopened, or the, the changes were reopened, I suppose you'd say, in about April, May time. And it was great to see, I mean, you'd, you'd hardly notice that the changes have been made. There's, um, I think, six holes where they've had some alterations done and done a lot of good work, but quality work. And again, course superb. But then on the um, Wednesday evening, we ventured into Port Rush uh, Town Centre, I suppose you'd call it. And for anybody who's been there, you'll know that in and around the harbour is where the sort of a lot of activity goes on. One place in particular is uh, the building that's known as Ramor, uh, and within that building and in and around it, the sort of pubs, um, the harbour bar, um, there's another bar to the right. I think they're all part of this Ramor group, and great location in terms of a vantage point, you're right on the harbour. All different types of food within these different restaurants that they clearly own. And again, it's great, great food, great, great atmosphere. And we then went into the harbour bar. Inside of the harbour bar, real little quaint place, loads of character, great atmosphere. Lots of pictures on the wall of when um, Darren Clark has been in there with his open trophy. Gray McDowell has been in there with his um, it is picture of the US Open trophy. So great history of the place, but again a great, great atmosphere. And then as I went to the uh to to the toilet, I heard some noise coming from upstairs which sounded like some live music. Asked what was going on. Yeah, somebody playing live upstairs, went upstairs, and unfortunately that was a mistake. And the mistake was because it was absolutely brilliant. The atmosphere in there was electric. It was a Wednesday evening. It was absolutely packed to the rafters. But the mistake was I ended up drinking too much Guinness. And bearing in mind I'm about to play Royal Port Rush at eight o'clock in the morning, it wasn't the best idea. However, the following morning, Storm Hector decided to hit uh, Northern Ireland which effectively meant there was no golf being played. You could not get out, you couldn't stand up. I mean, it was literally howling, 70 mile an hour gales. So we didn't play at seven o'clock, we played at, uh, uh, rather eight o'clock. We played at five o'clock that day, which gave me perfect time to get over the hangover and be geared up and ready to experience the open championship venue for 2019. And what an experience it was. Absolutely superb. Right up there for me with one of the best golf courses I've played and again because you've got to remember what it is I like about golf courses, not the same for everybody so it ticks the box in terms of links, it ticks the box in terms of the views, it's right on the sea, the views were stunning, 
the condition of the course was absolutely pristine. I mean, trimmed to within an inch of its life. It was really, I stood on some T positions. My favorite T position is on the um, fifth green, not T position, um, the green vantage point is the fifth green, sixth T. You stand there and it just takes your breath away. Absolutely stunning. Here's a look at why I like Royal Port Rush so much. As you can see from there, pretty damn special. I, I would have liked to have played it with a little less wind because it was near blowing me over still at five o'clock that day, but that said, I uh, actually played all right around there and enjoyed it immensely. Um, and then the, that was our last night and the following day we traveled over to Dublin where we decided to have a little bit of a walk around Temple Bar and enjoy all the enthusiasm of the Irish people in and around uh, Dublin City. We had a great night out and I'll run a clip right at the very end of this video which will show you our little time at uh, Dublin. But what I want to talk about is, before I do that, is a couple of things, the videos that will come from this. Is I've recorded Man vs Golf Hole challenges at the four courses that I mentioned. So they're the videos that will come out that will show you the courses in a little bit more detail rather than just these little overviews that I've shown you today. Um, they'll be coming out in the, in the weeks to come. I hope you all enjoy those. But I just want to talk about Ireland for a second as a golfing destination. Like I said, a lot of, lot of links tracks, there's a lot of parkland tracks, don't get me wrong, but the stretchy coast, this wild Atlantic way as they call it, it's, it's unbeatable in terms of the sort of views, the quality of the golf course, everything that I've already mentioned is brilliant. But on top of that, it's the nature of the Irish people is unbelievably welcoming and you sometimes question when people are being overly nice um, and polite and friendly and helpful. Sometimes in certain parts of the world that can be, um, you can sometimes question, is that because it's part of the whole tourist job that they're encouraging people to be nice and uh, a false environment is what I'm getting at. And that is certainly not the case and it doesn't feel like the case in Ireland. People are so, they're so friendly, they're so helpful. It's almost like I said, from my day-to-day -day life, it's something that you're just not used to experiencing and it is real. It is a real nice touch. Like I said, as soon as you go in the barn on the first day, went to the bar at County Sligo, guy behind the bar comes over and he's chatting away and he wants to know a little bit about you. And it is, it's just so, so nice. And then back on the final day, we travel from Port Rush over to Dublin and a little bit of a stop off at a McDonald's. Um, 
a, a drive through McDonald's. And even there, you know, the guy just cannot do enough to help you to make sure that you've got everything you need. So it's like I said, a real, really friendly, friendly country. Great, great golf courses, great hospitality, great enthusiasm. And as you know, when you get to all these bars, Guinness, music, and great times seem to be everywhere in and around Ireland. So I had a, an amazing week. I, like I said, really grateful to everybody um, who helped with the planning and the people at, with the accommodation and the golf courses allowing the average golfer to turn up and play and film. It was a real privilege and honour. Loved every minute of it. I'll play you out with our little trip to Dublin and give you a feel for the atmosphere there. And uh, I'll have got a little bit of man flu to get over. It was well worth it. And Ireland, I'll see you very, very soon. And as for everybody else that's watching, give it the thumbs up, the comments, the likes, all them things. And uh, I'll also see you very soon with some man versus golf hole challenges. Check out from my pocket. Ten sovereigns.